Hi, I'm Jason with Camp Perspective, and again, back with another how-to video going over the concept of pressure work, um, pressure on, pressure off, and adding in the marker. In another video, I used the word yes to tell the dog, or to tell Millie here, that what she did is what I wanted, uh, and, I, and I fed her immediately after I, I cued that word. In this video, we're gonna use a clicker. Okay, it's all it does, it makes a clicking sound. Uh, this is my preferred method. If you're gonna um, apply a marker, because it keeps keeps the thing the sound consistent. In the, in the other video, uh, I was using the word yes, but there was a couple of times where I said good instead, and that was inconsistent. And when working with dogs, you want to be as consistent as possible in what marker you're using. So it's not a big deal, but it helps. So here uh, we have a clicker. I have my remote collar, and for the standard uh, or average dog uh, owner, uh, this is a lot of stuff to think about. They're gonna have their food, their pouch. Uh, you know, their, their clicker, their remote, the dog, the leash, and all that stuff. So, um, typically what I recommend is if you're going to do something like this, kind of master the basics first with just the, with the remote collar. You know, get real comfortable with it, and then this way when you add in this extra thing, it's not on top of another thing that you're starting to, you're trying to learn at the same time. You know, you've already learned this, you're, you're familiar with it, and then you add this on top of it, it makes your life a lot easier. So, it's super simple, it's going to be the same thing as I did before. Um, I'm going to grab myself a piece of turkey here. Um, and I have Miss Millie setting, setting is on 25. And I'm going to go in and just start to tap, tap. So as soon as all four paws were on the placemat, right, I clicked the, the clicker. And that marked for her that what she just did was what I was looking for. Tap, tap. Break. And we're keeping it real simple. I'm going to try it from a different angle, see if it confuses her a bit, because we've been doing it from the same spot this, these past two videos here. Tap, tap, tap. That's good. Excellent. And a lot of people will rec uh, recommend that you load what's called load the break, load the clicker prior to training, and all that does is create the association that when she hears the click, she's going to get a reward. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it does speed up a little bit, but your dog will learn that the click means food relatively quickly within a training session. So. Tap. Very good. That was a good one. So we're just balancing things out by, you know, we have the 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 break, uh, the kind of discomfort from the e collar that she doesn't like, paired with this reward of like, oh, it means if I go there, that contraction stops quicker, and also I get fed, and I get fed well I'm using real turkey here. Uh, it, it motivates the dog to do the behavior more. Tap. Yeah, very good. So, it's that simple. When doing this, if we're gonna use food, I only do it during certain stages, really. In this one, we're doing it um, in the learning phase. Uh, she's learning how to turn this off and that going there garners her reward. When I add in the word place, and then I say place, and she goes and she gets fed, she's tying the two together. Definitely helps speed along that process and make it a bit more concrete. Um, and down the line, like let's say I'm doing duration work with her and I'm gonna have her there for two hours. I wouldn't be, I personally wouldn't be feeding intermittently during that time frame. Uh, I would just have the dog stay there for two hours and then I would release them at the end and they're done. I'm really only rewarding for the, uh, for the immediate send. So when we're doing training sessions like this, it's repeated, you know, uh, place break, place break. So it's, it's, it's kind of getting ingrained or cemented in her brain there. Uh, but once it comes to application, I personally don't worry about it because, again, I don't want to have to think about that stuff. I don't want my dog owners to have to think about that stuff because they, if they got kids, if they're trying to watch a movie, if they're trying to eat dinner, like they're not want they're not wanting to have, have to get up and leave the dinner table to feed their dog every five minutes to reward them from being on the dog bed. Okay, so I don't worry about it. However, if you are one of those people, the way I would go about it is. You pick the length of time that you're going to do. You send your dog there. Maybe they're there for 20, 30 minutes. Uh, we'll use an hour, for example. Um, 
let's say your dog's placement's right next to you, you're reading a book on the couch and you can put a timer for every five minutes. And every five minutes you just toss something down to your dog for staying in place. If your dog jumps off a place, you would kick in with pressure to bring them back on, but we would not reward them because that is a correction. I want the dog to learn that they only get rewards for staying on the place or for going there when being told. So, and then like in the beginning, it could be every five minutes. And then at the very end, you know, once you hit the 60 minute mark or the hour, you give them a bit more and then you release them and then they're done. So then you're, you're starting to like incentivize your dog to stay there more or longer. Um, and then maybe you do that for a couple of days and then expand it from every five minutes, maybe every six minutes or maybe every 10 minutes. So I'm starting to wean off the rate of reinforcement so the dog doesn't develop an expectation of being fed every five minutes because then you're going to create another problem. Now, in my book, I just send the dog to the place once they learn it and if they try to break off prematurely, I correct them and then they learn, okay, I go there, pressure turns off, I try to step off prematurely, pressure turns on again, I'm going to just opt to stay on the bed and not get off in the first place. Uh, it's just as effective, okay? And that's my preferred approach because if you have a very food-driven dog, you're going to counter yourself. When we send a dog to the placemat, uh, we want them to go there and chill out, to be calm, because that, when they're calm, it's going to be a lot easier for them to maintain a boring command like this. But if you're feeding your dog and you're keeping them mentally active and, and like expecting and then kind of in a dryity state, you're more than likely going to see them break off of the placemat because they're, exc they're excited, they're engaged, they want to figure out how can I get more food out of you, okay? So there's no right or wrong in my book. It's just what are you willing to do? What do you want to do? How hard do you want to make it? Uh, how much do you want to learn on the stuff, you know? So when I come in, I always give my clients the bare minimum that's going to get them what they're wanting. And then I do, and, and then if they want, they can incorporate other things like food. Um, I do get dogs that have like, you know, confidence issues or that are insecure or that shut down the pressure. And I'll tell the owner like, we'll focus on the foundation first. And then we, as quickly as possible, try to add in the food once the owner is comfortable enough with their remote and fluent with it um, to help balance things out for that particular case. But it's not, it doesn't have to happen. I've worked with plenty of dogs that were insecure without food and they did just fine. Um, the food just helps kind of get them over the concept of pressure a little bit quicker. Right? So I'll do a couple more. Break a break. She's being lazy here. Let's get our food here. Clicker ready, and these clickers are really expensive. They're, they, I got these for like a, these were. I was giving a bundle of them for free, but they usually run about a dollar, two dollars. Um, I do like this one because it's a very nice, loud, pronounced click. Some dogs can be afraid of the clicker sound. There are softer sounding clickers, or if your dog is even scared of that sound as well, you can always use the word yes or good or great, or whatever word you want to use. Just make sure that you're being consistent with it. And tap, tap. It's keen on that one. Very good. Do one more. Break. Yeah, girl. Tap. Ah. Good. I, I forgot I had to click on that one. Good. So that one was one click on, on the remote, one tap, and she ran directly there. And the reason why I didn't follow up with more taps is because I could see that she was shooting to go to the placemat. So I turn off the pressure as soon as I see the dog gonna, like, thinking to perform the command, right? So I can see it already as soon as she started moving. Um, you know, and then this is uh, something you learn with practice, but for the most part, it's pressure on until the dog completes the command. I'm already building the concept of as the faster you move, the faster this goes away to kind of teacher and motivate her to move quickly, okay? So I'm just looking at perspective and thank you for watching.